Now this is the face of an incredibly happy man. I have just got an absolute bucket lister. Something that I have never found before and I think probably pretty rare. So enjoy. Welcome back to the windswept fields of Perthshire in a fairly sunny, not too cold, Scotland. So I am back and I've got another new field. Well, new as in new this year because it's been harvested last week and it was a potato field. Now this field has produced a few pretty nice things over the last couple of years. Uh, I'm going to put a wee picture up right about here by the power of technology which is a coin that Pete got. Now I think it was last year but it could have been the year before and it's quite a rare James VI silver five shillings from the 1590s. So that's the son of Mary Queen of Scots, he got that from this field and quite a long time before that, about 15, 18 years ago I had a beginner out on this field and believe it or not he found a gold sovereign of Queen Victoria, which will appear about here. Um, so there's stuff here. Uh, Pete's been on this field last week, the sneaky wee devil, and he's already had a couple of Georgian silver coins from George II and George III. So fingers crossed, there's more to come. So um, as ever, thanks for your continued support. Also, uh, I've posted a new video on my other channel, Visit Scotland Tours. So if you'd like to learn a little bit about the last Jacobite battle, which happened after Culloden, then go and take a look. Right, let's go and see if we can find some treasures. Signal number one. It's a solid 88 and it's an ear blown target. I don't think it's deep. Now, a coin on the first hole would be pretty amazing, but I think it's going to be aluminium. It just sounds... Just sounds too, too high pitched, to be honest. Well, still in there. Third time lucky. We're out. 88, 89. As you know, I always film and post the first target. Then I start to cut out the tin cans for you. What's that? That is a piece of melted something. I think it's lead. I think it's a little kind of lump of melted lead. It is. This one was the end of a a teaspoon, I think. Teaspoon handle. Um, came through 60, 65, 70. It's possibly pewter. Uh, it's got this iron inc uh, incrustation on it as well, so I think it's a sort of mixed metal. Not massively old, 100 years, 150 maybe. But uh, I think there's been a, I think there's been a bit of a dump here in the past. There's lots of pottery, lots of fragments of glass. Uh, it's all over the place. Typical when I'm looking for something to show you, I can't find any. Oh, there we are. So there's a piece of pottery just right there. There's another piece right there. And there's little fragments of glass and such like. It all looks Victorian in era. So, uh, so yeah, I think there's been a dump here previously, but we are on the edge of a very, very old town. Well, village. So who knows, maybe they've been spreading stuff here for centuries. Another wee bit of glass here. This is the top of a, a bottle. Oh, top of a bottle. A lovely aquamarine colour. Maybe a medicine bottle. But uh, probably Victorian in date. But again, there's lots of it. It's everywhere, to be honest. At last, I've got my first filmable, well, decent target. Well, I think I do. I think it's a lead seal. Came through 62, 68, didn't sound good at all, but there's iron in the hole as well, and I think it's lead going by the weight of it. And it looks pretty circular. 
so I think it is a lead seal. A bag seal, a fertiliser seal, a seed seal, it seems too small to be a, 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 a linen or a, um, a seal for uh, flax. There's definitely some letters on there. Well, it is a seal. I can tell, look, it's been folded over. You see the sort of a little uh, nipples there. So there's a couple of letters at the bottom. There's maybe been some sort of inscription on there or such like. And there's definitely a couple of letters visible there. But I'm not going to get anything off that other than that, I'm afraid. I would reckon it's probably going to be from the 19th century. Sometime um, 1800, 1850, something like that. But it's a start. It's been an hour and a half. That is my first decent target. Here's a, uh, here's a funny story for you. Um, a friend of mine's son is in Australia and he's got into gold prospecting. And he was out five hours from anywhere in Australia, right into the bush country or the outback or whatever you want to call it. And he came across two guys who were also prospecting and they obviously realised he was Scottish. They said to him, where are you from in Scotland? And he said, uh, Perth. Perthshire in Scotland and they said oh we watch a guy on YouTube from Perthshire called the Scottish Detectorist have you heard of him and my friend's son Ian said heard of him I know him so talk about a small world I think the uh, I think the, the YouTube channel the guy's got a YouTube channel I think it was called slim slim pickings or slim diggings um, so if you're watching uh, hello Australia Talk about a small world. The Scottish detectorist has gone global. Well, I've got to say it's been a pretty dire day. Uh, I've been going for three, three hours, three hours, 15 minutes, something like that. We've got a 94. I'm not convinced, to be honest. We'll level that wee bit off. Ninety four, ninety five. I mean, it sounds okay, but it's definite bottle top territory. It's out. I was supposed to be getting joined by Albert, shock horror. He's not here yet. Oh, I don't believe it. Oh, is that a coin or is that a? No, it is a coin. I think. Well, it's a coin. This may well have saved the day. It looks like a Georgian. It's got that kind of rounded edge to it. Yes! Well, that's it. I'm giving up. Well, I'm not giving up, but... I always think when you find a coin, that's kind of... That's kind of your... Your day has been worthwhile. Oh, it's actually pretty reasonable. I can see stuff already. It's definitely a coin. And it's definitely George the Third. So you can just make out a seated Britannia on the reverse. And on this side, well, it's not quite as good as it as it looked, but I can just see the words Georgius 111 D Gratia. DG Rex. So George the Third, King, by the grace of God, or by the grace of God, King. So George the Third. So in fact, there's a date at the bottom. I was going to say it'll be sometime around probably early 1800s, and it is. It's one eight zero seven, eighteen hundred and seven. 1807. So it's a half penny. It's George the Third. So as you know, 60 years on the throne, 1760 to 1820, he was he was suffering terribly by this point with his mental illness. His son took over as regent in his absence because he wasn't mentally fit from 1810 to 1820 uh, he was very devoted to his wife Charlotte of Mecklenburg and they married well he should never really have been king uh, his father died around about 1851 uh, George III's father died and he was the Prince of Wales so he was next in line to be monarch when George II died um, so when his father died then about um, uh, sorry, 1751, not 1851, 1751, it put George III in line to become the future king. 
and uh, and then they decided quick we need to get this man married he needs to produce some children so uh, his mother actually arranged his marriage found a German princess called Charlotte of Mecklenburg and uh, and proposed uh, <laughs> the the mother proposed uh, rather than George himself and George only met her half an hour before they got married and one of the diaries of one of his courtiers describe her as not not terribly ugly so uh, there you go a match made in heaven but they had 15 children something like nine boys and and six girls so uh, they lived a happy life apart from his mental problems so it's a coin it's a half penny and all day long that would buy you a pint of beer if not two i only got that coin uh, just a couple of minutes ago right there uh, right here 8788, is it going to be another coin or are we back on tin can number 42? There's been a lot of tin cans off this field, a lot of aluminium, a lot of junk. And it looks like we've got some more. Well, that was short lived, wasn't it? Well, on the four hour mark, an absolutely awful signal produces what might be coin number two. It looks in terrible condition, but it is a coin, I think, or a button. That is the reverse, completely encrusted. That is the other side. No idea which side is which, heads or tails, but um, you can see there's quite a lot of encrustation on it. There's a bit of something going on, but not enough that I can see what it is. And, well, it's a fairly chunky coin. My guess would be, looking at the size of it, I think it's probably a farthing. It's a quarter of a penny. It could be Victoria, it could be earlier, it could be later. But um, yeah, quarter of a penny. So my guesses would be probably 18 or 1900s. But uh, let me know in the comments below. Maybe take the old cleaning pen to this, see if I can get in and off it. Do not adjust your TV screens in the distance. We have got Albert. He's made it. He is here. So let's go and see if he can find something because I'm not having much luck. This signal sounded like a dog's dinner. 55, 56, but I dug it anyway. And look at that. I've got a spoon. I've got a teaspoon. I've got an imprint of a teaspoon. Well, I don't think it's particularly old. I'm going to straighten it gently. Possibly. Might snap. There you go. One a teaspoon. Take that home, give it a wee wipe. Can use that for making my coffee in the morning. 50, 100, maybe 150 years old at best, but one of the best finds I've had today. This one is a piece of lead pipe. It sounded junky, and it is. However, when I stuck my spade and detector in the ground to the side, There's another target. So maybe it was a sign. The gold sovereign is right next to the lead pipe. 84, 85, 86. Not brilliant to be honest. Another tin can I think. Sounds terrible now. One more, and we'll get the pinpointer. Hmm. Right. Last one, and we'll get the pinpointer. Rubbish. Why is it the junk is always the deepest? Unbelievable. There lies the tin can. Right, get back to you in a sec. Well, we're out. Next speed fill has produced it, so it's somewhere here. Somewhere there, somewhere there. Oh, oh, you're joking. I don't believe it. That's a silver coin. I do not believe it. 
That is a silver coin. It's a love token by the looks of it. Look at the way it's bent. You absolute beauty. How is that even possible? How is that even possible? That sounded terrible. Well, you all heard it. It came and it went and it came and it went. That's definitely the target. Yep, 84, 86. Right. Oh God, silver. I think it's going to be a William. A Gavillimus. William the Third. Unbelievable. I wasn't even going to dig that target, to be quite honest with you. I just thought that is a tin can. Well, that is definitely a silver coin, but I think it's going to be completely blank. I think it is. I'm going to be struggling to get anything at all off this, but what I'll do, I'll dry it out and I'll get back to you. I cannot believe that. Look at the depth it was as well. I mean, that's probably a good eight or nine inches and it came out on that, what, 15 spade fool or something. Fantastic. Well, I found that silver coin. I went to go and show it to Albert and it's actually Pete. <laughs> so, Sneaky Pete by name, Sneaky by nature. So he's out. I just filled that hole in. I cannot believe that that uh, coin just came out there. Unbelievable. So let me put this camera back in the holder and I'll show you. It's been a wee while since I've had one, but it is a love token. Now, it is almost perfectly smooth, but you can see the way it's been bent. And on the reverse, there is nothing. It's as smooth as a baby's bum. It's a sixpence, going by the size of it. It is silver, so it's probably quite a high silver content, 92% or so. But what I can just make out is in the fold, let me see if I can zoom you in a bit to show you. Can you see in the, in the crease the letter G and V, which is Gavillimus, is what it would say. And then you can just about make out a head looking to the right hand side with a wee quiff up here at the top and that is William the third zoom you back to usual so yeah William the third so he was on the throne from 1688 with his wife Mary I think Mary died around about 1692 and then he carried on on his own until 1702 I think it was and then he was succeeded by his wife's sister, Anne. And she was the last of the official Stuart monarchs. She ruled until 1714, and then she died without children. That's when they got the Hanoverians and George I from Germany. But this is a beautiful coin. Interesting that today, I was, uh, well, not today, yesterday, I was at a place called Riven Barracks, which I'd done a video of on my other channel. And it was the site of the last Jacobite battle. The Jacobites, in the days after their defeat at Culloden, marched 20-odd miles to the south to King Usi, to a place called Riven Barracks, or Ruthven Barracks. And uh, they captured what was a British garrison and they burned it to the ground. And so that was the end of the Jacobite Risings. And this coin is the man who started them. I'm over the moon with that. Someone clearly didn't like the man who gave this coin. They've just thrown it away. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Well, you can see why I mistook Pete for, for Albert, because they practically look like twins. But he's finally made it. They also both drive black pickups, which is why I thought the other guy was... Albert, when it was Pete. Ordinarily, I wouldn't have dug this target. It came through as a 44, which is uh, is pretty uh, low for me. Got a mad dog coming in this direction. A German Shepherd by the name of Jura, my little puppy who doesn't uh, doesn't realise it's me yet. Just turned one year old, so I'll see if I can get her in the shot in a minute. But yeah, I would never have uh, dug this. 44, it wasn't a great target. Generally, I don't dig anything below uh, sort of 45, 50. In fact, this was as, as low down as 40. 
And I think this is actually a fragment of a clog, a clog clasp. You can see it's got a little, a little hook on that side. There's been another one there that's snapped off. And I think that's what that is. I think this is a clog clasp. So wooden clogs. Apparently the farmers used to wear them back in the day. So I'll let me know in the comments below. But if it is, it's probably going to be two, three, four hundred years old. Copper alloy. So look who's here. Hello, darling. Don't know. Can you call a dog darling? Hello, baby. Hello. Come and see me. Come on. Come and see. Say hello to everyone. No, don't be digging my hole up. Where were you when I needed you? So there she is, one year old. And full of mischief. Right, just had a wee catch up with Albert. He didn't get this today, he got this another day. And it is a coin. There's writing in the middle part. I can see a letter H. Beyond that, I cannot see a lot else. Now, it's got lettering all the way around. I don't know if it's just my imagination, but it looks like it says F-O-R-H-O-L-L-A-N-D. For Holland? Let me zoom in a wee bit for you. Do you see that there? For Holland? It could be. So is it a, is it a coin from the Netherlands? I'm really not sure. Initially I thought maybe a French coin. And then I thought, no, nah, it might be a wee trade token. And then on the other side, again, you can see some lettering. Nothing that I can figure out, though. It's got a little milled edge on it. You can just make out some of the little lines. So, let me know in the comments below. Yeah, another piece of tinfoil. But if you're finding that, you're not going to miss hammered coins. Either we've got a bit of silver, a Georgian, or shallow aluminium. Or maybe a bottle top. 91.93, it's an ear blower. Somewhere about here. And I've moved it. It's now coming out at 99, so it could actually be brass. But I'll take silver. Well, it was shallow. Because there's the crust. Ah, and there it is there. Well, it's a thing. It's a bit of a, I don't know, a bracket or a mounting or something, but yeah, copper alloy. And uh, yeah, again, I was completely wrong. <laughs> X marks the spot. Oh, still got this pinpointer on. Solid 80. I don't think it's going to be anything good, but just in case. I have a huge amount of outtakes in this video, I can tell you. I must have dug 50 odd holes. And it's not been particularly great until suddenly I got a little flurry of three coins. Well, we've got a clod shot. We haven't had one of them for a while, have we? Right, oh, shouldn't have turned that off. I need to know what half it's in. Right. Well, the answer is this one. What's that? That is a stone. A lump of lead. Or a lump of bronze. Well, it's definitely that. Turn that off. Get Lezzy's magic toothbrush out. And try and figure out if it's lead or if it's bronze. Well, it looks a bit green to me. So I think it's a fragment of bronze. Or copper alloy. Yep. Well, purpose unknown. But it's just a random little piece. Probably a wee cast off from metalworking. And we'll never know how old it is, but it could be 100 years old. It could be 4,000 years old. But we'll never know. This one is a 54, another bit of aluminium, I suspect. 
Is it on? It is on. It is on. I'm sure it was there. It is there. What is going on? Is it in there? It is. It's, it's in here with the worm. The worm's just fallen out. Yep, it's definitely in here. It's kind of falling apart. Right, it's not in there. It's in here. There's something there. Well, that's not... It's not uh, aluminium. That was... It feels like it's the weight of lead. And it kind of looks a bit circular. But I don't understand why it was such a low output at the 50s. If it was lead, and a substantial wee piece of lead as well. Well, it's circular. And it's folded over on one edge. Let's tease it open a wee bit. Not sure what it is though. Well, in fact, you know what it might be. It might be the the end of a of a tube, possibly. You know, a squeezy tube. So that would be the nozzle, and then there would be an aluminium bit coming out here. Either that, or it's some sort of button or some sort of mount. But it is lead or a lead al alloy. But uh, maybe a hundred, couple of hundred years old. A very sweet sounding 94, 95, 96. Are we going to get another silver? That would be nice after the horrendously slow start that we had. I thought it was going to be another one of those days. I can assure you sometimes I'm out for three, four, five hours and I find absolutely nothing. So you get to see the, oh I don't believe it, it is another silver. That is a silver coin. That is another silver coin. I got another silver, Pete! <laughs> Pete's not far away from me. Well, it sounded like a good target. You heard it, 93, 94. 95, 96. Don't know who it is though. I think it's. Hmm. It's a man, I think. I think it is. It's maybe William the Fourth. Where's my water bottle? What a day this has turned into. It was absolutely awful to begin with. I think it is, I think that's William the Fourth. If it's not William the Fourth, it's George the Fourth. I thought George the Fourth looked to the left. It's a silver coin, and it is a shilling. Because I can see it already on the back. Look at that, one shilling, 1836. 1836, so I don't know if that's William or George, George the Fourth. Is it William the Fourth or George the Fourth? George, is it? I, oh God, I can't remember the last time I found either a William or a George. So that's why I don't know who it is. Hopefully we can get something off the lettering. So it's definitely 1836. One shilling. It is, it's William the Fourth. I can just see Lemus, L M U S, Gavillimus, William. William the Fourth, DG, Britannarium, Rex. So, William the Fourth, by the grace of God, King of Great Britain. There you go, Pete. Can't be bad. How about that? Fantastic. Have you had anything? I've got iCoin, but it's not... Well, we look at Pete's stuff and we'll get back to you in a second. Pete's going to be heading off shortly, so I just wanted to catch up with him before he disappears, but he's got a button, probably. 
1800s. He's got another stud or button here, which is probably a wee bit older, 17-1800s. Curious wee bit of lead, not sure what that is, it's kind of got a, a curve to it. Don't know about that. And then he's got what looks like a bobby. Now it's very difficult to see, especially in this light, but there's a thistle in the centre there, I think. So this is a, a sixpence. It's copper, Scottish, and it'll probably be Charles the First, Charles the Second, or or William the Third, uh, who was also called William the Second of Scotland. And um, so if it's Charles the First, sixteen twenty-five to sixteen forty-nine. If it's Charles the Second, sixteen sixty to sixteen eighty-five. And if it's William, then it's sixteen eighty-eight to seventeen hundred and two, roughly. And that would have been a copper sixpence back in the day. I've probably got you 12 or 15 pints of beer, Pete. Hey. Well seen, it's the weekend. You can go and celebrate. Well done, Pete. Oh Well, you saw it, you heard it, and I think that is a first. It is William the Fourth, as I mentioned before, and I don't think I've ever had a silver coin of William the Fourth. Not that I can remember. If I've had one, it must have been a long, long time ago. Now, he was a really short reigning monarch, one of the shortest in modern British history. It's one shilling, it's 1836. Now he only ruled from about 1830 to about 1837. And uh, I'm guessing that this would probably be pretty, pretty rare. Certainly a lot rarer than any Georgian or Victorian coins. So it is a bucket list find for me. To find a William the Fourth silver coin is incredible. So he, uh, I, I honestly don't know a lot about him because I've never really found them. I, I seem to remember Martin had one of these, well, not one of these, a William the Fourth coin um, last year, and that's the only time really that I can remember one being found by one of his any time recently. So. He uh, he was succeeded by Queen Victoria in 1837. Uh, I know he lived to a fairly good age. I think he was in his 70s. And his niece was Queen Victoria. He had quite a number of children. I think he had eight or ten kids. But they were they were all illegitimate with his mistress. So uh, so he was succeeded by Queen Victoria. Unbelievable. Um, and one shilling, I was just saying to Pete, that would be a serious amount of money to lose. One shilling was 12 pence. At the time, Queen Victoria's rule, you could get a, a pint of beer for, for half a penny to a penny. So this is probably somewhere between 12 and 24 pints of beer. What a terrible loss and what a fantastic way to start the weekend. I am over the moon with this. If you'd have told me a couple of hours ago that I was going to end today with two silver coins. I would have thought you were mad. What a find. Absolutely unbelievable. A bucket lister, without a doubt. We've got another digger. 79. Copper or lead, I'm thinking. We're out. That's Pete away home as well, so just me and Albert and... To be honest, I'm probably only going to go for another 10 minutes or so. But that, oh, tell you what, is that another coin? i tell you what it is. That was low for a coin. That was very low for a coin and it's a half penny. It could be Victoria, but I'm going to need to give this a wee rub-a-dub. This day is just going from bad to fantastic. <laughs> It really is. It really is. Um, wow. Wow, what a terrible start and what a phenomenal end. It really is. Well, it's Queen Victoria. It's Uncle William's daughter. Daughter? It's Uncle William's niece. It's Victoria, who I just spoke about just a few minutes ago. And it is a halfpenny, and I tell you what, it's in really good condition. 1866, you got a very, very clear date there. What a day. Honestly, I was really getting worried. I was thinking, oh, not another session where I'm not going to find anything. 
Um, if you remember, I think it was about three hours before I even got that little lead seal and it looked like that was going to be the find of the day. 1866, halfpenny, Queen Victoria. So I'm not a million miles away from the uncle's silver coin, but you can see her bun head, or hair in a bun, looking to the left. Fantastic. Well, the pints of beer are on me tonight. And another target. 65. Bit junky, but, well, anything's possible today. Because my, my guesses as to what things have been have been so far off the, the mark. A wee clod shot, methinks. It is. Don't see anything. Could be a button. I haven't had a button today, which is surprising. Had quite a lot of buttons off this field previously. There's something there, is it? Lead? No. It's a piece of aluminium. Oh well, back to earth with a bump. Well, how about that, folks? I thought it was going to be one of those days that I've had a lot of recently. Um, and it's, I mean, when I got the, the silver love token, the William, the William III of England, William II of Scotland from the 1600s, I thought, wow, that has saved the day. But my God, I didn't think I would get a William IV silver shilling. Unbelievable. That is a real bucket lister. Um, just, as I say, William IV is really rare to find. As I say, I, I can't remember, other than, um, other than Martin finding one last year or the year before, it was a penny or a half penny. I, I can't ever remember finding a William IV, never mind a silver one. So that must have been a terrible loss for someone. Absolutely awful. Because it would have probably been the equivalent of a, a few days' work. But... Um, their loss a couple of hundred years later is, uh, is my delight, unfortunately. That's the way detecting is. So let's have a wee look at the finds. Well, here is the best of the best. And we've got a whopping one, two, three, four, five coins. I would never have thought after three hours that I was going to come away with five coins. And all pretty reasonable in terms of date. George III from 1807, I think that one was. A penny. Or a half penny. Um, 1866, Queen Victoria. 16, probably 1690s, which is the William, William the Third, William the Second of Scotland. And uh, this one, not sure. I think it's a farthing, quarter of a penny. Maybe Victoria, but could be earlier, could be later. And the star of the show, well, wow, what a find. 1836 silver shilling of William the Fourth. Unbelievable coin. Then I got my spoon, my lump of bronze, my little clog clasp, my little lead seal, which uh, I think is a bag seal or a fertiliser or a seed seal. My little peculiar wee bit of lead. Is it a, a tube or is it part of a, a button? Let me know. And then my only confirmed button, which is this little pewter one here, which is probably going to be sort of 300 odd years old. What a day, what a coin. Unbelievable. Cannot get my head around that. Unbelievable. Just catching up with Albert. I'm just chuckling away there. He just did what all XP Deus 2 owners have done many times, which is slide the shaft down and nip yourself in the little the little joint, you know, that that locks the stem. I'm sure we've all done it. Um, so, Albert's got four coins. Uh, he's got two Victorias here and here, which are 1860 three in 1866. Uh, he's also got a Queen Elizabeth II, a lovely toned halfpenny of 1955. And then he's got a coin which I think is quite old. Now, it's either George II, it's a halfpenny, which puts it 17... Let me think, when did he rule? 1736 to 1760, something like that. Um, alternatively, that could be a bobby, which is a sixpence, and 
that might make it Charles II as well. So I can just make a head look into the left hand side, so it's uh, it's one of the two of them. I'm going to go with George II, but if you think it's older, then let me know in the comments below. Not bad, Albert. Four coins for not a lot of time. Brilliant. So what a day. So thank you all for watching. And uh, hopefully I'll see you all on the next dig. If you're not already subscribed, you know what to do. Please hit that button. Let's get some more subscribers. I think I'm going to aim for 40,000 for the 1st of January or for Christmas. One or the other. We'll see how it goes. Um, again, if you, uh, if you want to have a look at some history, then pop over to my other channel, Visit Scotland Tours, where you will learn a little bit about the Jacobites and lots of other things too. So thanks all for watching. Take care and we'll see you on the next dig. Thank <laughs> you.